For the next two units, we're going to talk about a series of reactions that involve the process of carbonyl alpha substitution. So these are going to be reactions where we take a carbonyl and we substitute at this alpha position, the position right next to the carbonyl, with some sort of electrophile. Okay. Now, in the, uh, the chemistry that we've talked about thus far of carbonyls, um, we've talked about carbonyls as being uh, electrophilic. Right, so we have a carbonyl and then some nucleophile adds to the carbonyl. Right? In this case, the carbonyl is actually acting as a nucleophile. Right? It's reacting with electrophiles. So the question is, how does that occur? Well, the way to begin to understand that is to talk about a process that's known as the keto-enol tautomerization. Okay, so the keto-enol tautomerization. This is something that you may have encountered um, last semester uh, very briefly and we've been sort of talking about tautomerization um, a little bit in this class but uh, now we're going to uh, talk about it explicitly. So ketoenol tautomerization is something that um, all carbonyls are uh, capable of doing and basically what this involves is a carbonyl with at least one alpha proton can undergo a rapid rearrangement to give what looks like a hydroxy substituted alkene, right? So it's a, an alkene all or an ene all, right? So this is an enol functional group and this form then is the, is the keto functional group and it doesn't matter if it's an aldehyde or, or any carbonyl, it's just called the keto form. So it's a keto enol tautomerization and it turns out that whereas the keto form is electrophilic, as we've been talking about, the enol form is actually electrophilic. So if uh, you treat the enol form, or the enol form can be generated um, in the presence of an electrophile, you have this potential then to do this kind of substitution. And what's going to happen is that that type of, of uh, addition happens and you get to the substituted product. Okay, so <clears throat> this is uh, the fundamentals of, of how we understand how a, a carbonyl uh, can uh, be turned into something that's nucleophilic. Now, for the most part, we'll talk about enols a little bit, but for the most part, we're going to need something a bit more reactive. And so we're also going to talk about a, a bit of chemistry um, where we sort of generate a, a more reactive version um, of the enol. So this is going to involve um, treating the keto form with a strong base. And this actually allows us to generate an analogous um, type of intermediate, which is just basically the anion of the enol. Right? So that's the anion of the enol, and so that we call it an enolate, enolate. And then this can also react with electrophiles in the same uh, type of fashion, um, but it's, it turns out to be much more reactive because it's an anion, which is why it's more useful. And so we can also do uh, alpha substitution chemistry with enolates. So uh, all of the reactions that we're going to talk about for this unit and the next unit are going to involve this type of reactivity where we use um, enols or, or more usually enolates. First let's talk a little bit more about this keto enol tautomerization. So um, as, as we just said we've got a rapid equilibrium between two forms Okay. This is a rapid equilibrium, <clears throat> or usually it's pretty rapid. Um, these are uh, these are um, isomers of one another, um, but they they rapidly interconvert. Um, one thing to make sure that you don't confuse this with is resonance forms. So this ketoenol, uh, this actually involves atoms rearranging. So that, that proton there um, formally ends up on the oxygen. So this is a, um, an atomic reorganization. It's not resonance forms. Okay. Um, but uh, there, so this is an equilibrium process. So it's, uh, the position of the equilibrium is going to be dictated by thermodynamics. Whichever one of these is more stable, that's what the one that's going to predominate um, once the, the mixture is allowed to come to equilibrium. So usually, 
this equilibrium um, lies massively to the side of the keto form. So for the, uh, I would say the vast majority of, of carbonyls, at least simple carbonyls, uh, you're gonna see almost exclusively the keto form, okay? So I'll just give you one example. If we look at cyclohexanone, there absolutely is an equilibrium here uh, between the keto and the enol forms, okay? And there we have it, um, but this can be measured and the, the keto form is 99.9999%, um, whereas obviously then the keto or the enol form um, is uh, almost negligent, uh, negligible uh, in this in this uh, mixture. Okay, so mostly you're, what you're going to see is the keto form. However, um, if you are going to do a reaction with an electrophile. Um, such as the ones that we that I've just discussed above, it's going to be via the the enol form. So, right, if you're going to do um, you know reactions, it's it's going to be via that form, even though it is the the minor um, uh, component of the mixture. Okay, so how does this interconversion happen? Well, it's, it's useful to talk about at this point before we've just sort of glossed over it, but. Um, but uh, there is a pathway by which these can interconvert. Um, and this, uh, this keto enol tautomerization can be catalyzed either by acid or by base, okay? Okay, so we can talk about either of these forms very quickly. So in acid, we have the carbonyl and just like we've seen again and again, if we have um, some proton around, that can protonate the carbonyl. Okay, that gives us our octocarbenium ion. And then we'll just assume this is in water. Um, then we can deprotonate. And then when we deprotonate, those electrons can, can uh, dump in and then push up the, the electrons there, okay? And so that actually gets us to the, the enol form. There we have it. So uh, the proton basically just provides access to this uh, intermediate so that we can then deprotonate and get to the enol. The base then is gonna be just sort of the, the, um, the opposite of this where um, we're going to, in, in the case of, of a base, and we could just say hydroxide, um, we're going to deprotonate and uh, we could we could sort of do this uh, well we could do this in, in either resonance form the same way that we could do up here I, I could just show both here so imagine imagine that I initially put the the anion here okay but of course there's a resonance form for this where I can push those electrons up onto the oxygen and now that oxygen can grab a proton off of water and then we get to the enol in that way. So right, so either acid or base uh, can catalyze the interconversion um, of the keto and enol form. Um, you, for practice, you might want to uh, just try out going from the enol forms back to the keto forms with acid or base catalysis. Remember, it's going to involve the exact same intermediates, and we're just going to reverse the arrows. So I just want to be clear about. Uh, an equilibrium again. So equilibrium is controlled by thermodynamics. So these catalysts, acid or base, um, are accelerating the interconversion, but they're not going to change uh, the, um, the pr proportions um, of the, the keto and enol form, right? That's just controlled by the stability of the two forms. Um, and so adding an acid will accelerate how much they interconvert, but it won't, uh, it won't change how much of each that you have. All right, in the next video, we're actually gonna talk about um, some reactions that can occur uh, via the enol form.